Hello, this is William from Visual Components. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a 3D PDF template that you can use for recording and playing back simulations in a Visual Components product. To get started, in the 3D world I have a layout open, which you can find in our eCatalog panel under Demo Layouts. It's the machine tending demo layout. We're going to be using this layout for testing our 3D PDF templates. Now, I've already made some for you, which I'll include in the link in the description. Let's take a look at them now. I am using Adobe Acrobat Pro. The first template you see is the one that comes with the software. It's the Visual Components template. And you can see it has many different form fields on it. And these form fields are used by the software to populate the PDF when you record the simulation. You have the 3D window, you have a component list, a component description, and this is mostly for your build materials. You have the model name, which refers to the title you give the PDF. And you have these controls here for resetting or playing or stopping the simulation. You can fill your view, and these other options here also control your view. In the 3D window, you can rotate the camera, pan, and zoom. And the top right corner here, you have a logo link, or just a OK button on a form, to go to a specific hyperlink. And you can see all these form fields here on the right side under Fields. So my first page, I have all these form fields. And these are the types of form fields and names you have to use on your own 3D PDF template. If you use different names or form fields, that probably won't go there. So in the next example I'll show you is one I made by myself, and it uses the same exact form fields, the same types and names. So we have a 3D window, the model name for the title, controls for the simulation and navigating the view, and a component list and description for build materials. Also left some hints down for a user viewing the PDF of how they can control the camera of the 3D world. Now, you don't have to use all of these form fields. You can have a very simple example like the one I'm showing you here. It just has a 3D window. That's it. Let's now take a look at how these templates can be used. So I'll minimize Adobe Acrobat. Let's start by recording a simulation and export it to a PDF. And for the template we want to use, let's use the Visual Components one that you're probably familiar with. Let's give it a title of just an example. And then we'll start the recording and choose where we want to save the recording. I'll use the default name of Machine Tending and overwrite any existing one. And now the simulation starts and it's being recorded. Let's wait till the robot puts a part in the machine. So far, so good. Let's now stop and save the recording. It should open in Adobe Acrobat. And here you go. So this is the template that comes with the software. I can rotate the camera, pan it, zoom. I can select components. I can also select ones that are listed here in the bill of materials. And you can see the component description. Here's the title that I used. If I click this logo link here, Visual Components should take me to the Visual Components website. Hopefully, there it goes. Yep, there's the website. I can reset the simulation, start it again, stop it, fill my view, and use these buttons to go to standard views. Oh ho! Let's now see how the other templates can be used. So I'll close this out back to Visual Components software. And we don't have to reset the simulation to start another recording. So I'll now change the template to be the tutorial example, that second one I showed you. We'll use the same title, start the recording, and we'll use the same file name. I will overwrite the old one I made. Let's now stop the simulation after the robot picks and places the part in the second machine here. So it looks fine, so let's stop and save. And take a look at the 3D PDF in a different template. So you can still interact with the 3D window. It's being displayed here. You can still select components, see some description, and use these navigation controls. Play, reset. All right, good stuff. Now for the company logo link, let's see where this points us to. So I'll just click it. And where's it gonna take us? Can you guess? Your favorite website? 
That's right, Visual Components Academy. It seems that I have to update the URL that's the button is pointing to, but I'll just leave that in the video. Because if we go back to our template, let me close this out. It is here. Let's double click the logo link or the form field here. And for the op the actions, sorry, when we click the mouse down, it opens a web link and it's pointing to visualcomponentsacademy.com. I'm going to edit this link. I don't remember if it's supposed to be academy.visualcomponents.com, but you can very quickly test. So we update it here, close it out, and now I'll save the template and use it again in the software. So let's start the recording again. Overwrite the old file. Let's wait till the robot takes the machine out of this machine and puts it over here. And there it goes. So let's stop and save. And so the template still works. Let's now try that company or local link again. And just have to wait for Acrobat to do its thing. And yeah, buddy. So it's very easy to test your template to make sure it's working. And let's now try the last example, this minified one. So back to the software. Let's change the template to be that minimal example. Same title, start the recording. And use the same file name. And now we'll wait for the robot to take the part out of this machine and put it on the conveyor here. looks fine. Let's stop and save. And here you go. So we only have the 3D window form field in this PDF template being used. And it just shows us the 3D world, what we recorded. We can move around, zoom in. We can select components, but we don't see any, you know, bill of description. But of course, with a, a PDF, you can edit it however you want to. You can add new types of controls just by using you know, a PDF creator or a PDF form filler. Now, I did make a PowerPoint to give you some more information. You first need a PDF, and then you need a PDF form creator or some type of application that can allows you to add those form fields. So here I'm using Adobe Acrobat Pro. You could find another software application to use for this purpose. From there, in your PDF, you have to add the form fields that you want to use, and they have to be the right type and name. So if you want to use the 3D window, it has to be an OK type button with this name of 3D window. This is the example that comes with the software. So it's this very simple image, and then the form fields are added over parts of the image. That's what this template is. This is the template that I was using for the tutorial. See, it's just a very quickly a PowerPoint slide that I exported as a PDF, and then I use Acrobat to add the form fields, which I show you in this next slide here. Notice it has the right names and types. When you make your 3D uh, template, make sure you save it with a, the correct name. You need a VC underscore prefix in the name, and you have to store your templates in your Visual Components documents in a folder called My Templates PDFs which you can see right here. So I have these three examples and they are going to be listed here in this templates drop-down menu when you're exporting to PDF. And the last slide is just that, you know, that simple example of using just one form field for a 3D PDF template. All right, this completes the video. If you have any more questions, please feel free to visit our forum at forum.visualcomponents.com. And as always, have a wonderful day.